in all four of these cells, if you look closely, you will see that the microtubules, the yellow structures, seem to emanate from something around the nucleus or at the nucleus. And that is very small, but it's the pair of centrioles that characterize animal cells. And you may remember, centrioles are made up of microtubules. So that they are the focal point for assembling microtubules in animal cells. And so you see that in two out of the three cases, very clearly, the microtubules are radiating out from the centriole. They do so in the neuron as well, but in the neuron, it's a special case where microtubules also lie parallel to the long axis of axons. In pigment cells and in neurons, you have a very dramatic example of the role of microtubules in moving vesicles around. And you'll see in a little bit that motor proteins use microtubules as tracks, and they essentially walk along these tracks, and they carry different vesicles. In the case of a pigment cell in the skin of a chameleon, when the chameleon darkens because it's against the dark background, pigments that are otherwise concentrated in the middle of the cell spread and darken the cell, and that's how a chameleon can change color. It responds neurally, and the pigment cells then move their vesicles containing melanin and other pigments outward in this fashion so that the pigments radiate throughout the cell and darken the cell. In the case of the neuron, the vesicles that are moving from the cell body at the upper left down to the nerve ending at the lower right are, of course, the vesicles containing neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are then synthesized in the cell body and conveyed along microtubule tracts by motor proteins to the nerve ending where they're going to sit around and wait for a nerve impulse to cause the vesicles to fuse with the nerve ending and release their neurotransmitter to affect either another nerve or a muscle cell. Uh, here is a fluorescent electron micrograph in which fluorescent antibodies to microtubules are added to a living cell where it actually picks up the location of the microtubule. The location in the cartoon is in fact taken from images like this. This is a partial picture, so it's not really showing that the highest concentration of microtubules or fluorescence is at a single point around the nucleus, and that single point is the centriole. Here are cells showing where the microfilaments are. Here's our epithelial cell, for example. Uh, in the columnar cell, the microfilaments are organized roughly around the cell in what's called the cell cortex, which is the cytoplasm immediately below the cell membrane. If this is a cell lining your small in intestine, then the structure you're looking at at the top of the cell, of course, are microvilli, and the actin filaments not only are in the cortex of the cell as a whole, but also penetrate the microvilli. Here's our neuron again. The shape of the cell, especially the structure of the axon, is in part due to the alignment of actin filaments also along the long axis. But this doesn't seem to be involved too much in mobility of, of vesicles. That's a function of the microtubules. Or to the right of the neuron are an attached and an unattached fibroblast. Now, microfilaments have a very different organization depending on whether the cell is attached to a surface called a substratum or whether the cell is suspended in medium. An unattached fibroblast takes on roughly an oval or spherical shape. And like the columnar cell, the actin is organized largely in the cortex just under the cell membrane to form a cortical ring of actin filaments or microfilaments, which allow the cell to have this sort of rounded shape. When a cell like this attaches to a surface, however, one of the first things it's going to start to do is flatten out and then start to move. That will require a reorganization of the microfilaments, and that's what you see looking so different in the attached fibroblast. In the picture of the microtubules, whether a fibroblast, for example, is attached or unattached, the distribution of microtubules is going to be pretty much the same. So it's the microfilaments that rearrange and allow cells to change shape readily when they are attached versus when they're unattached. And here is a fluorescence micrograph using fluorescent antibodies localizing actin bundles in cells. Look at the attached fibroblast in the cartoon and look at the fluorescence micrograph and you get a sense of these crisscrossing fibers that look like they are penetrating the processes that this cell is extending. Those are the pointy parts, processes being extended by the cell. You see that in the cartoon. Finally, intermediate filaments. We've already seen that intermediate filaments are often associated with cell junctions, making the junctions very tight and firm. This would be, for example, a, either a spot desmosome or a belt desmosome. And so intermediate filaments have a function in strengthening cell attachments. Uh, intermediate filaments are found throughout a neuron, but also along the long axis of the axon, conferring stability to this long, extended shape of the axon. 
And here we have a fibroblast, which is basically a meshwork of intermediate filament that surround the nucleus and then penetrate all over the cell in all directions. And that's indeed what you see if you use fluorescent antibodies to intermediate filament to localize the intermediate filament in the cell.